Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, we're going to recreate the poster for Gone Girl. So when this poster first came out, I thought it was a really great poster, very well done. Um, I like the minimalist nature of it, the simplicity of it, and also telling the story of Gone Girl just in the way the type is treated, kind of being hidden into the cloud. So we're going to recreate the poster. We're using some free assets um, that I found as well as some photos I took of a cloud. Um, obviously it doesn't match exactly because I don't have a photo of Ben Affleck that I can use, but we're going to get something that's pretty darn close. Now if you want to download all the assets so that you can follow along in the tutorial, go ahead, pause this video, go to the description, and download all the assets. Once you have those, we will get started. First thing we're going to do is create our document. To do that, we're going to go to File, New, Command N on your keyboard. We're going to call this Poster, and we want the width to be 2000, and we want the height to be 3000. Resolution doesn't really matter because we're setting the actual pixels here, so we can leave that to default. And let's make the background black. Again, that's not that important because we can change it. So let's hit Create. Next, I'm going to go to View, New Guide Layout. And this is already set, but let's go to the defaults and set it. So columns, we're going to do two. And I don't want any gutter, so I'm going to delete that. And I do want a margin. I want 70, 70, 480, and 70. So that looks good. Let's hit OK. Next, because this is um, has quite a few vertical elements, I'm actually going to create a bunch of vertical lines. Now, I wish there was a faster way to do this, but the way we're going to do it is essentially go to here, new guide, and then type in the position that we want. And we want it to be a horizontal guide, not a vertical guide. And we're going to type in the position. So let's start with 650. And rather than going up here and doing this every time, what I'm actually going to do is go to Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts, and go to Application Menu up here, Shortcuts 4. Go to View, scroll down to the new guide layout where that is. New guide right here, new guide. And we're going to add a shortcut, Shift Option Command G. Okay, and that's not a shortcut used by anything else. So we'll just hit Accept and hit OK. Now what we can do is just use that shortcut to pull up the dialog rather than having to go to the menu each time. And I'm going to quickly go through these. In the description of the video, I'll include a list of all the guides. Also, you can skip this step if you want to and just kind of um, follow along visually. But having the guides will definitely help in doing this faster. There you go. So those are all the guides I need. Next, I'm going to create the white frame. So I'm just going to click on the marquee tool here, make sure my feather is on zero, and just make a selection there to the outside margins. We're going to create a new layer, go to Select and Inverse, which is Shift-Command-I, and then I want to make sure my foreground color is white, and then hit Option-Delete to fill. We can call this White Frame. And let's turn that off for now. Next, I want to create the background color. So I'm going to go in here, and the background color is 314455. And we're going to Option Delete to fill the background with that color. I'm going to make a new layer, and then select my gradient tool. Make sure I'm on foreground to transparent with a linear gradient. And I'm going to start from the bottom and just make a gradient to right about between these two guides here. I'm going to put this on screen at 50%. Actually, let's make that 55. I'm going to make a new layer here. We can call this light. And we'll call this one dark. And for the dark, I'm going to start at the top and go about 
three quarters of the way down there and put this on multiply and make this also 50%. So there you go. We have kind of the basic um, graded background there. Next, I'm going to add a light. For this, we're going to go in the gradient tool, but we're going to use the radial gradient. I'm going to change the color here to ADA696. And we're going to start the gradient right about between these two guides here in the middle. And just drag that right to the edge there. And then do Command T for free transform. And then hold down Option so it transforms from the middle. And drag that all the way to the top. And drag it out a bit to about there. And then I'm going to do Command-J to make a copy of that layer. And with the copy, I'm going to transform, make that a little bit smaller to about there, and a little bit smaller this way as well. And then I'm going to also, on this light layer here, add a gradient mask, go on my gradient, Again, we're already on foreground to transparent. I'm going to change it to linear, change my foreground color to black. And to switch these two colors, hit X on your keyboard. And to default to black and white, hit D. All right, so with a black, I'm just going to in about, about that far on both sides, just so that we have a little less of that bright color on the side. And that gets our background in place. Next, I'm going to go to File, Open, and open the file called Roman. And essentially, I just want to use this. I don't want the boat there, and I don't want these colorful towers. So I'm going to use the Patch tool here to get rid of those. I'm just going to make a selection around these, and then drag this, and kind of use the top of the plants there to indicate where that should be. Make sure it's on normal, not content aware. We're going to do the same thing here. Just select those. Holding down Option to switch this tool to the polygonal. Um, this works similar to the polygonal lasso, or sorry, the lasso tool, which when you hold down the Option key, it switches your normal lasso tool to the polygonal lasso tool. And we're going to just do that there, and we'll do the same thing with the boat and the reflection. And there you go, that looks quite good. We do have an edge there, which I'm not crazy about. So what we could do, let's see if we can just use this. And this time I am going to turn, down, turn on the content aware, see if we can get that to look a little better. Yeah, doesn't really do anything. Maybe we can use just a selection tool like this. Kind of select this spot here, do Command-J to put that on its own layer. Do Command-T for transform and just kind of transform that to about there. And then go on the erase with a soft brush. And we'll just erase that there. There you go. All right, and we can merge those two, Command-E. And then I'm going to drag this into this file here, put it above, below the white frame. And we can call this Shoreline. I'm going to do Command-T for Transform again. Just make this smaller. And this guide here, I want this to be kind of right above that guide. So about there. Make this. Realize between these two guides is where a white frame is. So I don't care that it's not going right to the edge. About there looks good. And let's hit enter to commit that. I'm going to change this to a smart object and then put a mask on there, and then I go on my brush tool, 
going to right mouse click and select a soft brush here, increase the size of it, and then just erase this. Now to interactively increase the size of my brush, I can hold down control and option and just scroll left and right, put the opacity on 100 and just erase the top there. Like that. Don't really care about the bottom. I'm going to put this on multiply and then add a curved image adjustments curves. And bring up the lights. Oops. Okay, so that's on the mask. I want it on the layer. So Command M and let's bring that up like so. And then I'm also going to do an image adjustment on the hue saturation and take the saturation down almost all the way. Let's hit OK. So that's our shoreline. And I want to add a little radio tower here. So to do that, I'm going to go File, Open, and open this Yeehaw file. And I'm going to make a selection around the radio tower. Command C, and then Command V. And here I'm going to do Command M to curve again. And I want to bring the white all the way to the top of the white there. So that's going to get rid of any of the color in here. And then I'm going to make the thing a bit darker like so. Put this on multiply. You can see we still have a bit of the cloud up there, or sorry, of the sky up there. Um, I'm just going to use the erase tool. This is going to be pretty small. Usually I would use a mask for something like this, but because it's so small in our image, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to do Command T for transform, make this quite a bit smaller. Place it down here. Um, I think right about there looks good. Set the check mark. Maybe bump it up. There, looks good. All right, so now we have our coast in place. So next we're going to go File, Open. And we're going to open this black casual close here. And we want to just take our eyes. Um, first thing I'm going to do is just make a copy of this layer. Do Command Transform and just straighten out the eyes. So I'm going to do Command R to see my ruler there. Drag down a guide here. Just kind of level out the eyes and then flip horizontal. And then I'm going to just take our eyes. Do Command C. Command W to close the file, and then Command V. And I want the bottom of her eye to kind of line up with this guide right there. Um, and I'll make it a little bit smaller, but not much. About right there. Looks pretty good. And then we're going to mask it at that guide right there. So put a mask on that. And then I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Black and White. Just desaturate that. And then put it on Overlay. And then change the opacity to 24. And actually, what I want to do is I want to convert this to a smart object and to blur it. So I'm going to go blur, Gaussian blur, and just add a 3.8 Gaussian blur to that. That looks quite good. All right, next we're going to go to File, Open, and we're going to open the file called Mark James. And I want to cut him out of the background. Um, Let's go ahead and crop the file first. And then I'm going to go to the quick selection and click on select subject. 
and then we're going to go into the selected mask. I have this set to green. Um, I believe the default is magenta. Just go ahead and click here under color and change that to green. Green's a good color because green is not being used in this image. And then we want to go to our add to selection tool here and just kind of paint where the select subject missed. And then if I hold down option, it's I can erase where it overshot. And I'm just going to go around and just clean up the selection. Once I have it pretty much cleaned up, I can use the refine edge, just go into any areas here. Just do some last cleaning up here. And then turn on the smart radius, add about a three pixel to that, put a mask on there. And then if I hold option and click on the mask, I can see if I missed anything, you can see that should be white, so we'll just go on a brush, make the brush smaller, com holding control and option. And if I uh, drag up and down, it's going to change the feather of the brush. Make sure my foreground color is white. And just hit any spots there that I missed. That looks pretty nice. A little spot here too. If I hit X, Switch the front and the background colors there. And that looks quite good. Let's hit option and click on the mask again. And then convert this to a smart object. I'm going to drag this like this and then just drag that into here. And I want to place this in the center. Do command T for transform. I want the top of his head to be where this guide is. Just a little bigger. I want that hand to be below that guide there. So just a tiny bit bigger about like that. And that looks quite good. So we'll hit the check mark or hit return or double click. But that looks pretty nice. Next, what I want to do is go to my image adjustments, hue saturation, and remove about minus 50 of the saturation and to go to image adjustments at a curve and I want to bring the top of the curve down and then the bottom of the curve up just a bit and then go to blue bring up the bottom and bring it down the top that looks pretty good let's hit OK so the next thing I want to do is go to File, Open, and open the Cloud Camera Raw file. Let's change it to black and white here. And under the black and white mix, I want to take the blues and make those darker. And probably also the aquas as well. And let's hit done. Actually, let's hit open image. And this is the cloud that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and just select this cloud out. Do command C. And then command V. And I want to do command T to transform. Flip horizontal. And then I want it to be kind of the bottom of it to line up somewhere along the bottom of this guide there with this little thing on the right there. And I want this top of the cloud there kind of encroaching. So right about there looks pretty good. Maybe up just a little bit. Maybe 
just a tiny bit bigger. Right about there. So let's hit OK. I'm going to put this on screen. Now you can see the area around and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert, put this back on normal, convert it to a smart object and then put it on screen and then go command M to add a curve there. And what I want to do is I want to take the bottom of the curve until I don't see this edge anymore. Just drag it this way. So right about there and you want to do this as little as possible because if you overdo it you start to kind of dig into the cloud itself. So if you can do this as little as possible. So right about there, we're getting rid of the bottom. I still see a bit of it at the top and I'm just gonna fix that with a little mask here and a soft brush. And just paint out that edge there. And there you go, that looks quite good. And then on this mask, I want to take the bottom of this and make the bottom of the cloud feel a bit thinner, similar to what's happening up here. And to do that, I'm going to go to my brushes and I'm going to select one of my watercolor brushes. Um, you can actually buy the full set on my website, but I will include the one I'm using here in the assets for this tutorial. So this is 494 there. I want one that has relatively clean edges. I'm going to go to the brush settings here, click on shape dynamics, put that all the way up, take angle, put that all the way up, turn on scattering, not too much, um, probably 140 now even 130 and then increase the count to five and then turn up the opacity and flow jitter like so now let's take the scattering down just a little bit let's say 90 percent good all right so then with this selected the mask and a black and take the opacity down to around 30. I'm just gonna start painting along the bottom here and I can adjust my brush size, but I want the bottom of the cloud to feel thinner. And that looks pretty good there. We're gonna use this brush again. So I'm gonna go ahead and go new brush preset and we'll call this brush our cloud brush. Let's hit OK. That way we can use it later without having to recreate it. The next thing we're going to do is add a TV bar here. So let's go ahead and select our square marquee. Make sure our feather is on zero. And I'm going to make a selection between these two guides right there. We're going to add a new layer. We can call this TV bar. And I want to fill it in with 0A. 8, 9, FF. Nice bright blue color. There you go. And then I'm going to hold down minus or option, which is going to change my marquee to a minus. And kind of just uh, a little bit to the left of this tree right here, I'm going to deselect that half. Um, I can make a new layer here. I'm going to make this a slightly darker blue. Uh, we're going to use 0763B8. And let's do Option Delete to fill that. And then from right about here, so just to the left of his hand, to right about there, I want to make a orange layer. So the color here is going to be FF. 720A. Let's option delete to fill that. And then we're going to add some text. I'm going to make my foreground color white. Go on the text tool. I want to change my font to Montserrat. 
going to use Montserrat regular uh, at 20 points. And let's type here, all caps, continues 80 degrees. Now, if you're on a Mac to do a, uh, the degree sign, it's shift option eight. And let's add a couple spaces before and make this light. And do option delete again to change the color to white. I'm going to push this over. Kind of want the C to just be behind our guide there. And then I'm going to select it all, hold option and the right mouse key to just make the tracking a bit wider. I'm actually going to change it to left because I know where the left, uh, where I want the left to be. Um, that way when I make adjustments to the tracking, which is what option and right mouse arrow does, I can kind of get that 80 where I want it to be, which is right about there. I'm going to hold down Option, drag this, and I can also hold down Shift so it stays in the right place. Put it over here and type in search for, quote, amazing. And Command A to select all, and then Option, left arrow key to just pull that in so that we get a little bit more of that amazing in there. There you go. I think the orange is actually a little too big, so we can do Command T on that layer. Just pull it in a little bit there. It's about there. Go back on our search. T is a shortcut to go on your text tool, by the way. All right, and then Option again, drag this over here. We're going to type in Live ABC. I want to take the Live and in my character here, I want to make it italic and then change it to about 16 point. And then move that over so that it's kind of a little bit more hugging the right side. Okay, so then I'm going to take all the layers that make up our TV bar here and convert them to a smart object. And then change the opacity on that to 24 which to change the opacity on a layer, if you're on the move tool and have your layer selected, just type in the number you want it to be. So like that would be 55, 65, 25, etc. So in this case, I want it to be 20, uh, 25, that's good. All right, so I like the way that looks. Next, I'm gonna make a new layer and we're gonna call this vignette. And for this, I'm going to select the marquee tool, which is M. And I want the feather on this to be 200. So to, if you want to know the shortcut, so if you don't want to click up here, what you can do is if you're on the tool, just hit enter on your keyboard. Then you can type in the number you want and then hit enter again. So there you go. I'm going to select the inside area of where our white is. You can see it's added the feather to it. I'm going to go select, inverse, hit D to make my foreground color black and then option delete. And then I'm going to change this to overlay and make it 80%. And that looks quite nice. The next thing I want to do is start adding some of the distortions to this. To do that, the first one I'm going to do, and this is where quite a lot of these guides come into place, I'm going to take the eyes down to there. Whoops. Let's get rid of that feather. So to the second guide there and add a curve layer. The curve layer is just going to make it slightly darker up there. Then I'm going to add a, another curve layer, and this one is going to make it more blue. And I want this, um, I'm going to fill this with black and then go in my gradient tool with a white linear gradient from the top and just kind of drag down so that it's just blue right up there. And then I'm going to add another layer that goes to here. So the second grid line above the TV bar, 
this one I'm actually going to add a below the TV bar, and that's going to be a vibrance. We're just going to pump up the vibrance there to, let's say, 85. I don't like the green, but I don't think the green's in frame, so we might be okay there. It is a little bit too green here, so I'm going to go back to this layer and just take that saturation even down further to, let's say, minus 90. All right. Next, I want a TV overlay. So I'm going to go to File, Open. Oops. You'll see this TV pattern. I just took a photo of my TV close up. I'm going to open that. And with a marquee tool, I'm just going to select a segment here of TV lines. Command C. Close that file. Command V. I'm going to put this up over here. And do a command transform to make this smaller. Hold down shift. In the latest version of Photoshop, you don't hold down shift, but I prefer the holding down shift. So I kind of changed my Photoshop so that it has the old behavior. And let's put this on soft light. And I want this to go, let's see. Yeah, I want this to go to his the top of his shoulder there, so right to there. And now I'm going to turn off the guides temporarily, which is command semicolon. I don't want it to affect the lightness and darkness this much, so I'm going to do command M to add a curve and just pull down there. So it's giving the pattern, but it's not affecting the lightness and darkness so much. Is it okay there? And turn these guides back on. I'm going to make a copy of this, drag this up here. And in this case, I want it to go right to the bottom there. And this one I'm going to make even dimmer, so around 40%. Also, this one's a bit much, so let's put that to 50%. And I think this one down to 30. That looks pretty good. Okay, and then I want a bar of more saturation right here as well. And because I already have this vibrance layer, I can just add this to the mask. Option delete. There you go. So that's adding that blue line there. All right, and then the next thing is we're going to take the whole TV bar here. And we want to make sure we're above all the layers except for the white frame. And what I'm going to do is hold down Command and Shift at the same time and then do C. And that's going to copy everything regardless of layers and then do Command V. So there you can see I now have a layer that's that segment independent of layers. And what I want to do is I want to move that layer a bit to the right so that we have this kind of hitch right there. And then I'm going to take the this part of the layer, cut it, and move it back in place. And I don't mind if it's one or two pixels off. So maybe one pixel off. There you go. All right. And then we're going to do a similar thing from here to here. So we'll do Shift Command C, Command V, and in this case I want to move it to the left a little bit, like so, and then cut this half of it, Command J, and then move that kind of back in place, maybe one pixel off. And this half, let's move it so it's not quite so much. So right about there. And then I want to take these two layers Command E to merge them into one. And this, I'm going to turn off the guides for a second. I'm going to use a curve. And what I want to do is kind of reduce the contrast. So make it a little bit lighter and a little bit like this, just so that we have that a little bit lighter here, a little bit lighter there. It's kind of more obvious that this is a TV glitch there. 
said OK. And then let's turn the guides back on. For this, I want the single pixel marquee. Um, you may have it in your menu. I don't, so I'm selecting the little three buttons here. That's going to show me my additional tools. One single row marquee. I'm going to select that and just do that right where his headline is. And again, Shift Command C, Command V. Let's turn off the guides again and just move that to the right of it. So we have that kind of single pixel there. I'm going to do Command M and just make that a tiny bit lighter. Again, the effect is just that there's some glitching here, kind of give hints of it being a TV screen. And that pretty much wraps up the art portion of this. Next thing we're going to do is add the text. So let's go ahead and do command semicolon. First, I'm going to add the gone. So we're going to go in the text tool. We want monsterot. And in this case, I want it to be semi bold. I want it to be 147. And I want the color to be 29353D. There you go. And in here, I want the tracking here to be 240. And then th using this as my guide, I'm just going to start typing there. We're going to type in gone, center that up, and then hold down option, drag this down to this guide here. I'm going to type in lady. Here I want to change the font size to 106. Good. Now I want the cloud to kind of be showing through this. So to do that, what I'm going to do is first set the opacity of the layers to 90 and just hit 9 on the keyboard. And then I'm going to put a mask on it. I'm going to turn off the guides again. And this is where we're going to reuse that cloud brush we created. So I'm going to go to B for brush, right mouse click, and you'll see it here at the bottom of your layers is the new brush you created there. So let's select that. Make black my foreground color. Make sure I'm on the mask. And in this case, I can actually increase the opacity to 100. I want to just, or maybe 80. I want to just, where the cloud kind of comes over the letters, I want to paint some so it looks like these letters are a little bit inside the cloud. And having this cloud brush helps a lot to create that effect just like that and we'll do a similar thing on lady just where the cloud is the heaviest get a nice effect there and I can always hit X and delete parts if it's too strong somewhere but that looks quite nice next we're going to add the tagline. And the tagline is going to be, so let's go in the text tool. It's going to be Monsterot Light 19 point. And I want it, oops. So <laughs> make sure you don't make changes while you have a text layer selected. So let's do Command Z there. So I'm going to make a, so I want to deselect the layer, but I don't want to create a new layer. So what I can do is go up to here and say deselect layers. That way when I start making changes here, it's not going to affect the layer I have already. So this one I want to be black. And I want this to be at 80. And let's turn our guides back on. This one, I want it centered kind of between these two guides. So Right about there is fine. I'm going to make it all caps and it's going to say, you don't know what you've got till it's dot dot dot. And here I also want to change the tracking here to 46.8. There you go. 
And I'm going to change the opacity of this layer to 60. Actually, let's change that tracking. It's a bit too much, I think. Yeah, I think 35 looks better. Let's do that. So right about there. Let's do Command-T, just make sure that's centered. Nice thing about doing Command-T is it gives you these um, anchor points, and that shows you where the center line is. So that's centered. Next, we're going to do the text at the top here. I'm just going to copy this, drag it up here, change it to white. So for this, I want to turn on small and large caps. And I want it to be 17 point. And it's going to say from the director of No One Talks and a Facebook Movie. I'm sure you can all guess who that is. Good. And we're going to option, drag, make a new layer. We're going to say, all caps, Bruce Wayne, Miranda Frost. We're going to select that. And this is going to be 28 points. And actually, let's make this bigger. And I want to change this to extra light change this to zero. And that looks pretty nice. Let's make sure that's centered. It is good. Let me move that up just a little bit to there. Good. All right. And for the credit text down here, I don't want you to have to uh, go through the pain of watching me type all that in. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and copy this layer down here, change the settings to movie poster. And we're going to change it to 28 points. And in here, I want the tracking or the letting to be 23, the tracking to be 10. And now what I'm going to do is actually just um, open a text document. So we'll go and I'll include this text document in the assets. Got this credit text. I'm going to copy this, Command C, and then go in here. Go in the text tool, Command A to select all the existing text, and then just Command V to paste my credit text. And then finally, I'm going to actually change this uh, to 100%, but I'm going to change the color of it to 9E9FA3. And then lastly, we're going to take this again, copy this down here. I'm going to type in October and gonelady.com. Oops. Let's do that again. October gonelady.com. A couple spaces and then hashtag gonelady. And I want the October to be medium. And I want this bottom type to have that color. So I'm going to click here, select that color. And then I'm going to change the opacity to 100. Maybe if I hold down Option, I can change the letting. And then left and right, I can change the tracking there. So there you go. 
All right, if we turn off our guides, do kind of one final check, I think probably just add a little bit of a curve on top of the whole thing, but below the white frame. I actually want to take all the text layers, put them above the white frame. We can put them all in a folder called Titles. And under our white frame, I'm just going to add a curve layer here. Make it a tiny bit darker. And we can also just do a little bit of this. So give it slight up in the blue and slight down like so. And just a little too green here still. So I think I'm just going to take that last saturation out. And there, I'm happy with that. All right, so there you have it. That's how you recreate the Gone Girl poster in Photoshop. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, like this video, share it, or just leave a comment. I do look at all the comments and they do uh, inspire me on what other videos you guys want from me as well as just keep me motivated to make more of these types of videos. Also, if you want to get into the world of Photoshop compositing, I have a Photoshop starter kit which has a whole bunch of cool assets. I will include a link to that in the description of this video. I do suggest you get that. All I ask in return is your email so that I can send you my newsletters, discounts, new tutorials, and so forth. So check that out. Otherwise, I do have more professional training for Photoshop if you go to Nucle.com. Otherwise, I will see you next week. There's some other videos to check out. Don't forget to subscribe.